Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 5 May 2022, Cinco de Mayo. And in honor of that Mexican holiday, we're having a knife sale on the Apostle P channel. Well, we would have had one anyway. But anyway, ah, what the heck. All right, we got a big one tonight, guys. 37 items total, 34 knives and three watches. It is a big one. It's going to be a barn burner. Before we get into it, a little bit of housekeeping. First of all, I need to be familiar with and agreeable to the terms of the sale. I will post them on the screen for you in just a moment. I will also reprint them in the description underneath this video. Also in the description, above the terms of the sale, at the very top, you're going to see three links to previous videos on the channel. The first is to my Primer for Buyers video. That's a 38-minute expanded explanation of the terms of the sale. The second link will be to my FAQs for Consigners video. If you're interested in using this weekly sales event to move along some of your collection, that video might be helpful. It tells you how it all works from the consigner's perspective. And the third link, as always, is to my rates and services video for the Apostle P Knife Service, the original precision sharpening service for the online knife community. And then at the very bottom, below the three links, below the terms, you'll find the list of tonight's inventory, complete with timestamps on the left, pricing on the right. In that right-hand column, the number to the left of the slash will be the price of the knife as shown, the number to the right as sharpened by the Apostle P Knife Service. There will be no next day sharpening tomorrow because I will be heading for a road course racetrack in Michigan, so I'm not working after I put your packages in the mail. So expect your sharpened knife to ship in about three weeks, maybe a little less. If you see the word sold in lieu of pricing in that pricing column, that means the knife has been bought and paid for and is on its way to its new owner. No need to send and I'll take it for that one. I think that's about it for housekeeping. Let's get the terms up on the screen. We'll be right back with the sale. Here are the terms. All right, let's get to it, shall we? First up, we've got five leftovers from last week, two knives and three watches. The first one is a knife. It is from a Spider Co. It is the Rock Lobster. It says natural. What could that mean? I bet you guys know. This is a Blade HQ exclusive Rock Lobster. In natural or jade G10. It's going to have a right hand only tip up pocket clip. The Rock Lobster, well, it has a very much shellfish preparation blade, doesn't it? Yeah. Interesting that we would make a seafood prep knife out of CPM M4, but that's exactly what Spider Co. has done. We got a three and three quarters inch sort of a sheep's foot affair going on. We got a handle four and 13 sixteenths inches in length. That's a stainless steel liner lock. There is your engagement. The lockup is solid as a rock. Action's just fine. Centering's going to be dead. Let's see. We'll call it like new in the box. This Blade HQ exclusive is out of stock. When it was available, it was $229. Looked at some sold listings on eBay. Couldn't find any. What do you think of that? We ran it last week for $225. It did not sell. We dropped it to $200 on Saturday. It is still here. So somebody gets it for $180. 
an M4 Rock Lobster in like new inbox condition. 180 like it is, 205 with an Apostle P edge. That shouldn't last long. Next up, our only other leftover knife from last week. This is a Jesse Jaros Custom. It is his model Flare, F-L-A-R-E. It is a titanium frame lock affair with a blue G10 show side scale that's been smooth finished. You've got a black G10 backspacer with a lanyard hole integral to it. Looks like right hand tip up only. It is a flipper on phosphor bronze. The flipping action kind of blows, frankly. Think old hinderer. The satin finish does have some hairlines in it from use. Might have been user sharpened. Blade length is three and three eighths. Handle length is four and five eighths. There is your lock engagement. It is rock solid. The action is smooth and fairly free. It just it doesn't have much of a detent. And a, you know, old school flipping. Perfect blade centering. We'll call it near mint, no box, no cert. Uh, the new price from the table was $5.95 on this knife. We ran it last week for, shoot, I forgot. Anyway, I don't know. I think we ended up at $250. They run it at 300 and 250 or something like that. We're going to, oh, 260. <clears throat> We're going to drop it this week to 230. It needs a new home. That is way less than half of its original price. 250 if you like my edge on it. The blade steel is AEBL, by the way. That's the Jesse Jero's Flare Custom. Comes in a microfiber pouch. <clears throat> Next up, it's watch time. First of our watches is going to be the Citizen EcoZilla Diver. It is an EcoDrive quartz powered watch. Very matte black dial. 47 millimeters in diameter, and the lugs are interesting. This screwed on ring is what sort of secures the strap. So I'm going to call the lug. lug uh, the lug to lug, 47 millimeters as well. Thickness is 18 millimeters. Look at that kettle shaped case, very cool. So the actual case back is a screw down case back. <clears throat> Water resistance is 300 meters. Oh, it's a right left, it's a lefty watch. Or it's a righty watch that goes on your left wrist and the crown's on the wrong side. So it's got a screw down crown. Date at three. Looks like it's keeping time like dead on for the last week. So pretty good. It's got some very normal wear. Resin strap. Nice signed buckle. And a stainless steel keeper. Pretty nice watch all in all. Oh, it's got a unidirectional 60 click bezel. You kind of have to dig into those grooves to operate it. Not difficult. Oops, I got it upside down. That backwards crown is messing with me. Let's see. There we go. So anyway, these things are discontinued and out of stock. Kind of an icon for Citizen. It's a big one. <clears throat> Um, let's see. I'm seeing prices sold listings on eBay depending on condition between 100 and 283. And this is probably, I don't know, a middle of the road condition watch, certainly not pristine but not remotely worn out. We ran it last week for 150, got no takers. Dropped it to 130 for the weekend, still here your price this week. $110 shipped priority mail. That's the Citizen Ecozilla Diver. Next up, I am very surprised this watch is still here. These things, I, you know, I guess I don't have a lot of watch community viewers on this sale, but um, this is a Halios Seaforth version 3 automatic dive watch. 
Halios is a micro brand, and when they do a drop, they're gone in minutes. Um, I don't know what this watch sold for new, but I do know that there's one sold listing on eBay for this exact watch. It's sold for a thousand dollars. So let's kind of go over what it is. You have this nice leather. I believe that is genuine leather pouch. You've got the hybrid canvas that's leather lined strap that's installed on the watch. This is really, really a nice strap. And then you're also going to get this black rubber. It feels like FKM rubber and it's signed on the inside of the clap or the uh, buckle, which is interesting. That's a really nice strap. Really nice. Okay, so let's go over what you got here. The Seaforth version 3 is running the ETA 2824-2 automatic movement. As a sunburst gray dial, 41 millimeter case diameter, 46 lug to lug, so nice and compact for what you get. 12 thick with 200 meters of water resistance and then 20 millimeter lug width. <clears throat> I've got a double domed and boxed sapphire crystal over the dial and also a sapphire bezel insert. <clears throat> nice coined edge on the bezel. It is a 120 click unidirectional. Very nice action. Zero back play. And let's see if I can line this baby up this time. There we go. Just beautiful. And the case finishing is stupendous. There is your signed screw down crown. Just a beautiful watch, guys. And let's see how it's running. I set this uh, about 12 hours ago. And it might be a second quick. So, you know, two to three seconds a day, probably fast. Can't beat that. There is one very minor nick in the polished facet of that five o'clock lug. It's very hard to get the camera to catch it. It's so slight, but that's the only thing that keeps it from being like now. <clears throat> Your price, let's see. We ran it at 900 last week. We dropped it to 850 for the weekend. It is still here. Guys, this is a gorgeous watch. Uh, this week, 800 bucks. So about 200 under market for this watch. That is the Halios C43 automatic dive watch. Next up in the last watch in tonight's sale, it is from Seiko. And the watch inside the box, the box doesn't say. But it is <clears throat> this one right here. It is the Seiko SRPC09, the UFO, as you can see by the case profile. And beautifully done, kind of a cushion case. Radial brushing on that top side surface. Everything else is polished and beautifully faceted. You've got a 44 millimeter diameter, but it doesn't wear like it. Uh, I'll also call the lug to lug 44 because it just kind of is. It's got that cushion case sort of nested lug system. <clears throat> Um, 13 thick with that boxed and domed Hardlex crystal. It kind of gives it that 70s retro vibe. You have a 4 o'clock crown or about, what, 345 crown. It is just a push-pull crown. Uh, the movement inside is the 4R36, so it's going to hand wind. It's going to hack. It's got the day and the date. That red second hand looks awesome with that gradient blue dial. And I don't know if you can see this, but it doesn't really have a bezel per se. I guess it does. But see, the bezel is kind of high polished. And then there's a lip before the crystal starts. And there's a blue stripe in there that's very striking. 
Man, this one's gorgeous. Let's see how's it running. Wow. Um, yeah. This has been running about 12 hours, and it's... It might be a second slow in 12 hours, and it's been sitting uh, crown up. So it's probably going to run a little faster than that during normal wear. The bracelet is uh, 22 millimeters in slight taper, and it is a folded link, but nicely done folded link. It's hard to tell, actually. Uh, Oyster-style bracelet, stamped clasp, display back, but a screw down case back and the condition is very much like new in box it's hard to tell if there I don't think there are any scratches on it just some fingerprints beautiful watch if you like that vibe uh, so let's see they're discontinued they're out of stock sold listings on eBay running between 228 and 2 or 319 uh, we ran this last week at 250. Didn't get any takers on Thursday night. Dropped it to 200 for the weekend. It's still here. Let's do 195 on the UFO. Like new in the box. Shipped priority mail. Next up. We've got one from Jesper and Jens. It's a giant mouse ace biblio, kind of in a rare all titanium configuration. Beautiful stonewashed titanium, ambidextrous tip up deep carry paperclip clip. Beautiful flipper on ball bearings. Better than that. There we go. Blade steel on these is M390. Blade is 2 and 7 eighths inches in length. The handle is 3 and 7 eighths. Although it looks like it'd be a frame lock, it's not. It's a stainless steel liner lock. There is your engagement. Lock up is rock solid. The action's beautiful. The centering is off, guys. It's just plain off. And the pivot has been played with, and it's just off. But the action's fine. Great user. We're going to price it accordingly. Uh, these are out of stock everywhere, as you probably would suspect. And the condition we'll call near mint in box. I think these were $235, um, the all titanium ones. And you guys know they usually sell for pretty close to their new drop price on the used market but because this has got an off-center blade we're going to do 170 170 like it is 195 with an apostle p edge that's the giant mouse ace biblia next up i haven't had one of these on the apostle p knife sale for a while it's a browse and inside that pelican like box is a tool Inside a plastic sleeve with a card, it tells us this is the Sniper FL for frame lock. Serial number 587 of 1000, D2 steel, 59 to 60 Rockwell on the hardness. Here is the knife. A velvety bead blasted stainless steel frame lock handle. It's sort of got Ken Onion Kershaw written all over it, doesn't it? Looks like the relief cut for the frame lock bar is going to be on the inside. So, ball bearing flipper. Always ready for a firm detent. This is just about a medium detent. Quite nice. Bit of a trailing point blade in detail. 3 and 11 16 inches in length. 4 and 7 8 inches on the handle length. Stainless steel frame lock, but not super heavy. Rock solid lock up. Beautiful flip in action. Perfect blade centering. Deep carry. Right hand tip up clip. Very, very near mint on this one. Just some very faint hairlines in the bead blasted finish. I mean, like, you got to hold it right to see them. So nice job. Uh, these are out of stock. May, probably not going to be made again, I wouldn't think. Uh, when they were available, 
last and lowest web price I could find was 89 bucks. This one can be shipped priority mail $60 like it is, 80 with an Apostle P.I. That is the Browse Blades Sniper. Next up, I'm not going to get it confused this time. It's a Reich knife, not a rake, a Reich knife. And the model, and it's kind of a beauty, it's the Tule, T-U-L-A-Y. That's a pretty looking knife, I got to say. Mm -hmm. Let's see. It's got a very cool flipper tab. Got a little Daryl Ralph thing going. Okay, here's what we got. Blade length, 3 and 11 sixteenths. Handle, 5 inches. Blade steel, 154 cm. Beautifully bead blasted, guys. Just gorgeous. Man, that's pretty. So we got red and black G10 layered on the handle, and then carbon fiber analyze. Does that is that a titanium sort of bolster, and then a blue anodized ring around the pivot? Polished deep carry clip is going to be ambidextrous with a nice flipper tab. I think that's a stainless steel liner lock. It is rock solid. Beautifully centered and flips like a rocket. Whoops, just have to have your finger on the tab. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful knife, guys. Uh, so let's see. When these were available, I think they were about 130 bucks. Um, but they're not. They're discontinued and out of stock. eBay sold listings between 85 and 126 this one is like new in the box and a beautiful example. Your price is going to be 110 and then 130 if you'd like it with an Apostle P. Edge. That is the Reich Tule. Next up, man, I've still got a sister knife to this that I don't even think I have it in the display area in the gun room. I think it's like in a bin. This is a K Bar Dozier and it's the, uh, the Dozier 4065 which is going to give us the oval opening hole blade. I guess you'd call that a drop point, I guess. It's kind of like a paramilitary too shape. So, yeah, these are just a classic, man. They weigh nothing. This is like the bug out before there was a bug out. Uh, so you got three inches of blade, four and a quarter inches of FRN handle. And uh, the pivot on these is amazing, guys. The washers are molded into the FRN. And the fit, I mean, you can actually tighten this pivot down, and this is what you get. And they all lock up great. I mean, they'll, it's just a well-made little knife, little workhorse carry knife. Nice pocket clip, reversible left or right. Got the mid-lock. It's probably not much of a flicker. More of a sweeper. But not because of the blade stuff. And the centering on this one uh, is doggone perfect, which you don't see on these very often. Condition like new in the box. They're still making these, still selling them. Uh, they're 26 bucks at your favorite web retailer plus tax and probably have to pay postage on something that cheap. Or just buy this one like new in the box, $20 like it is. 40 with an Apostle P. Edge. That's the K-Bar 4065 Dozier folder. Next up, we got one from WR Case and Sons Cutlery Company, Bradford, PA. Inside the box, uh oh, we got a TB, a Tony Bose 71028WSS, and the model is the Teardrop. And uh, the cover material is just listed as green. And I actually couldn't find a listing for this knife. Uh, so here it is. I think that's curly maple, and it's definitely green. There is one very cool character line or figuring right, man, it's hard to see, right here to the right of that brass pin 
there's like a rust colored line going perpendicular to the green I don't know if you can you see it it's so cool anyway nickel silver bolsters and end caps diamond shield stainless steel blade Warren Cliff variety closed length on the knife is three and nine sixteenths it's a half stop blade pull weight I'm gonna say seven superb walk and talk centering uh, it's a case condition on this one guys is going to be near mint in box i could not find a listing for this cover material but looking at the similar uh, covers of this knife it probably sold web retailer for around 60 dollars and they're not available anywhere this one can be yours 50 like it is 65 with an apostle p edge it's the case TB71028W SS Teardrop. Next up, let's just double up the case. Uh -huh. This one is going to be a 6220SS Peanut, and the covers are blue. <laughs> the classic of classic Peanuts is the case Peanut. Got a little serpentine action going on. Beautifully jigged and dyed blue bone by the way nickel silver bolsters and end caps we've got half stop knife main clip point pull weight is about a six and a half or a seven and on the back side you got the pen blade tool centering what did i say i said close both blades condition is going to be like new in the box. These are available new. Several websites have them around $53. This one can be yours for $40 like it is. And $65, I sharpen both blades. That is the case 6220SS Peanut. Next up, we have one from Asheville Steel Paragon Knives. And this is an interesting knife, guys. <laughs> Here you go. It is the Asheville Paragon Estiletto, E-S-T-I-L-E-T-T-O. Mm -hmm. The handle is 7 and 3 eighths inches in length. It does have a tip-up pocket clip for right-hand carry. <clears throat> the handle is aluminum, and I don't think it's hard anodized. It's like a red, more, it looks more like a red powder coat to me. It's got couple little necks and rubs on the corners but no big deal it is a button lock single action OTF with safety and I'm gonna tell you this right up front fellas whoops you got to keep your pinky off the ripcord for one thing okay come on back it fails to lock almost every time unless you have it pointing straight down uh, I was talking to my consigner about this, and he thinks they ship these knives, at least in certain places, as a gravity knife with the springs not installed, and the spring was kind of an afterthought. So I think it was kind of meant to be a gravity knife, meant to retract it. You push the button down and pull the ripcord back. Gosh, and if you have your pinky wrapped, it'll catch. And then, let's see, then lock. Now it's locked. But, you know, it's kind of a conversation piece. Condition on this, we're going to say, is uh, is uh, excellent to near men in box. You can buy these in different colors. Couldn't find a red one in stock. For $250, web retail at your, if, at your favorite knife website. Um, we're going to sell this one for 150 like it is, and we're not sharpening it. Next up is a beautiful, 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 beautiful knife from Almar. Well, you know, there, Almar has designed and had manufactured some iconic tactical knives in the last, what, 35 years? Um, this might be 
like the the granddaddy, the, the real soldier blade, right? It's the sear, the S E R E. Kind of a later version, and you'll notice this is not a Japanese manufactured knife. If you look at the uh, deployment button, the spine safety, the monolock. Yeah, these are made by Benchmade, probably on the same line as the AFO2, if I were going to guess. This does have the Almar style clip, and the only mark on the knife is a little tiny rub at the end of the clip. Uh, and it looks to me like that's left or right reversible. So you got the grainy, hard anodized black aluminum handle. The coated spear point blade combo edge. And I think, yeah, S30V on these. Rock solid lockup. Perfect action. Dead centering. Uh, let's see. You got a 4 and 13 16 handle, 3 and a half inch blade. They are discontinued and out of... Oh, they're not... Yes, they are out of stock. When they were available, the web retail price was 200 This one can be yours. Very near mint to like new in box. $180 shipped priority mail. 200 with my edge on it. And man, if you don't have... If you don't have a sear or an AFO automatic and you're a knife collector, you really need to consider whether you're really a knife collector. I'm just saying. Beautiful knife. Next up, it's time to have a little fun. From Viper Tech. And I don't think this came from a gas station. We've got a nice heavy ballistic nylon belt pouch. Mm -hmm. And inside we get this thing. It is the Viper Tech Commando OTF automatic. We have a zinc alloy handle, five and one eighth inches in length, plus the impact device, which appears to have some kind of a ball bearing in it. Mm -hmm. We get a pocket clip. Looks like it could go either way. We have a Handle coating that is Cerakote, according to the manufacturer's website. All black hardware. Double action OTF. Dagger blade. 440C. Don't know the coating. Probably going to rub off just from opening it and closing it. Button effort. Medium firm. 100% reliable deployment. Condition is... Like new in the box. These are out of stock on Viper Tech's website and elsewhere. They were 120 ish new. This one can be yours like new in the box. $85. And we're not sharpening the dagger. Doesn't need it. Next up, you guys are going to love this. Uh oh. It's another Viper Tech, no box, just the inner belt pouch. Look at that, huh? Oh. Ooh. Oh. It is another OTF from Viper Tech. It's the USA Pride model of a Chinese knife. Interesting. So you got a zinc alloy handle, five and a quarter inches in length, plus the glass breaker. You have a spine-mounted slide button, a reversible pocket clip. A pretty nice-looking drop-point blade combo edge. You know what? It's quite sharp. It's a two-tone. Mm -hmm. Blade length is three and seven-eighths. I'm going to call this a firm button. If you're a geezer with arthritis, don't buy it. 100% reliable. Uh, let's see. Believe it or not, they're saying that's a Cerakote finish, but I gotta have, I gotta believe the flag is silk screened on top of that Cerakote. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, let's see. These are out of stock as well on the Viper Tech website when they were new. I 
and available they were about 120 web retail this one can be yours like new no box 85 bucks that is the viper tech usa pride otf auto next up well we had a classic almar now we got a classic kershaw a made in usa kershaw it's the 1870 knockout man i own this knife and i love this knife i don't know what i did with it so you've got a nicely milled for aesthetics hard anodized black aluminum handle a nice parkerized deep carry high speed low drag pocket clip i think it goes four ways on this knife it does stainless steel subframe lock that's got like a parkerized finish you got a speed safe mechanism with the spring assist there's the lock up on that big thick subframe rock solid actions beautiful centering's down the middle blade length on the knockout three and a quarter handle four and five eighths we'll call it near mint to like new in box they're discontinued now they're out of stock when they were available web retail was about 80 bucks at your favorite web site this one can be yours 55 dollar 75 with an apostle p edge that's the kershaw 1870 knockout time to turn the page boys okay talk amongst yourselves all right next up got a spider co why would anybody ever want a spider co uh -huh, there's your box it says it's a pacific this is kind of the og pacific salt guys yellow frn handle old style clip mount from the old endura right looked like the endura two or three uh similar to an almar pocket clip on it some of the the bird knives but anyway it's just a standard midlock with a boy dent h1 completely uncorrodable steel plain edge rock solid lockup nice action centering is off a bit let's see did i think yeah i think this one's been sharpened but nicely it's got a decent edge on it kind of toothy all in all pretty squared away um let's see web price on these was 80 dollars ish as they were trying to clear them out but they're now discontinued not a stock we're going to do this one for 70 like it is 90 with an apostle p edge that's the spider co pacific salt next up got another spider co with a story here's the box no label no label mm -hmm. so best i can tell this orange g10 native 5 the handle started life with an S90 V blade inside, right? But at some point, somebody frankened it up. And the blade that's in it is an S35 VN blade, which came with black G10. So somewhere there's a black G10 handle with an S90 blade. Um, and I got to tell you guys, uh, the lockup is nice. The action is very stiff considering it's a bushing pivot. Um, and it's kind of gritty going around. Like, I don't know. Might be a bit of a project. So that's why it's going to be cheap. Let's say 95 bucks, like it is, 115 with an Apostle P Edge. And that's in your inventory as Spyderco Native 5 OR S35. Next up, I've got one from Enrique Pena. At least I have a, a knife and a microfiber cloth. I don't have a box for this one. Bit of a user. This is kind of a cool one. It is the Pena X Series Swayback. And I bet you when you see the handle material, 
you know that this was a Blade HQ dealer exclusive. So what we got here is a front flipper. Sorry guys, I, I can't front flip. On ball bearings. Titanium bolster lock with steel insert. I believe that's a DLC blade. Don't know what the coating is on the titanium. Beautiful jade G10. Got a milled titanium clip. And you're going to see a little bit of wear on that clip. And it looks like it got dropped once. Because there's a little funky spot in the G10. And one tinier over here. So it must have got dropped on its tail. Um, I'll tell you what. Like zero edge wear on that M390 blade. Uh, two and seven eighths inches of blade. Three and seven eighths inches of handle. Rock solid lockup. Beautifully smooth free action. Blade centering is perfect. Hard to see with all that black, but it is. So condition, I'm going to say, is uh, excellent. No box. Uh, these are actually in stock right now as we speak at Blade HQ. If you want to buy a brand new one, it'll cost you $274. Or just buy this one and use it. $175 like it is. $200 with an Apostle Piaget. That is the Pena X-Series Swayback. Jade DLC. Next up. <laughs> From Great Eastern Cutlery and the Northfield Unexcelled line of premium pocket knives, we have an 83 Tuscosa Model 83 1121LB. And the covers are going to be Dark Brood Jigged Bone. I love the little Tescosa. I do. And you know, I've, you guys have heard me say this. Not my favorite jigging pattern, but this one is done well. Kind of a mini gimp shield. Triple line nickel silver bolster. Brass liners. Brass lanyard tube. Polished clip point blade. And man, is that a stunner. Let me wipe the greasy fingerprints off of it. Oh, look at that. Yeah, you look in the dictionary under clip point knife blade, and that's what you'll see. Cut swedge long pull. Uh, closed length on this knife is only three and three eighths. It's just a, a tiny little thing. Very light action. Now, guys, this has got vertical play, and it's got a little side play. So I can't really tell you what the blade centering is because it's different every time. Well, it looks like it's down the middle this time. Um, condition, though, other than, you know, that's just a factory condition with most GEC lockbacks. Uh, near mint in tube. And let's see. eBay sold listings for this knife with this cover material between 175 and 215 this one, we're going to sell it cheap because of the blade play. $125. Bucks. $140 with an Apostle P Edge. That's the GEC Northfield number 83 Tescosa. Next up. From Buck. No box. Who needs a box? Who needs a box with a 112 Ranger? Nice leather sheath. Hey, guess what? It's Cinco de Mayo. I didn't think I had anything made in Mexico. Look at there. This is the Cinco de Mayo knife right here. How about that? Look at this, guys. This is a beautiful Ranger. and It's a recent model, and I didn't date code it. I should have. So it says 112 with a plus sign. So whatever year that is. But it's a modern knife. It's got the very radius corners, the large pins with all proud heads. I expected to be to see a laminated wood product, but I don't see the lamination lines at all. That those are solid wood scales. Look at the grain. And look at the it's almost got like curly maple lines in that one ring. It's so cool. Lock up. Dead rock solid. Beautiful action. And 
What on earth happened at the Buck Factory? Was it made on a Friday afternoon? The blade centering's perfect. That can't be the spec. Just kidding. It's the classic of classics in the Petite package. The Buck 112 Ranger. 420HC. 3 inch blade. 4 and a quarter inch handle. You can buy this knife brand new online at your favorite retailer for $60. Or buy this one. You know you're getting a perfect one. Um, 50 bucks. Like it is 70 with an Apostle Piage. The Buck 112 Ranger. I'm knocking over GEC tubes now. Okay. Next up. Oh my. Would you look at this. From Bark River Knives, Escanaba, Michigan, USA. I'm uh, a month and a half from being there. Uh, we got a Bush Craft Scout in Magna Freaking Cut. And look at the sp the uh, look at the hardware on this thing natural curly maple scales red liners mosaic pins oh my oh my comes in the waterproof treatment applied bushcraft style leather sheath with fire steel loop oh boy oh my very cool blade. First production run knife. I don't know, man. It's almost like an, an Aurora blade, but look at the stock thickness. I think that's like 90 thousandths, guys. Saber convex. Jimping on the spine, and it is sharp. There's your Magna Cut. Beautiful curly maple. Mosaic pins. Brass lanyard, red liners, condition, like new in the box. Uh, let's see. Well, dimensions, guys. I forgot to measure it. It's like, I don't know, like three and five eighths and four ish. You can look it up if you want to. So, okay, guys. Uh, they're out of stock. They are super hot. They sold out in like a minute. Um, this knife. Would have had a new web price of about $290. Uh, you can't buy one. $260 for this one, guys. $260 like it is $285 with an Apostle Piage on that Magna Cut blade. Next up, we got another Barky. Yes, we do. From Escanaba, Michigan. USA. The knife is a UP EDC. Man, I don't remember this one. I mean, I have a vague memory. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is this a Jason Toon DLT configuration? I, here's why I think so. It's because of what, what was done to make this knife. So it's going to come in the standard fold-over sheath. That is a very nice, tidy little package. I love this style sheath. And here's the knife. And it's got the Apostle P prototype handle configuration. Yes, like Mike Stewart. Not my idol, but man, I do, I do dig Mike. Oh. So he always makes his prototypes in plain black canvas, polished like this. When I made... What did I... Oh! Did I prototype the Gunny Sidekick in this? No, 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 no. It's my wife's paring knife. <laughs> a full height convex ultralight bushcrafter. But anyway, I did that, you know, just to get Mike's goat. And I like it. Red with black, my card. It's just great. So that, guys, I believe is a Bravo EDC handle. Sure feels like it. Short, but I can get all four fingers inside the horn. And then the blade is like a Canadian, just a great hunting shape. This is a hunting knife. Everybody thinks you need a big knife. No, you don't. You need this. That's what you need. Uh, anyway, 3 and 9 16 inches of blade and A2. First production run knife. And then the handle is 3 and 3 quarters. So, and it's just got 
it's basically a new knife. The A2 has just picked up a little bit of a golden hue. It just looks beautiful. <clears throat> so this knife brand new would have been 220 web retail. We're going to do this one at 150 150 like it is 170 with my edge on it. The Bark River UP EDC. Next up, another small knife. This one, though, from LT Wright, baby. And this is the LT Wright Small Northern Hunter in AEBL steel. LT sheets are always so nice. Inside we got the knife. Speaking of Canadian style blades, there you go. This is AEBL steel, three and three eighths inches of blade. That can't be right. Yeah, it might be a little longer than that. And then you've got three and five eighths inches of handle. OD green canvas micarta matte finish orange liners. Fits the hand super well. Brass hardware on this one. Uh, web price on this brand new would have been 140 And it looks like this thing might have got a Spyderco sharp maker in the wrong position. Just some little fine scratches in that blade face. But this is the show side. There's your LT right maker's mark. So yeah, these were 140 new. We're going to do this one at 100 shipped. Priority mail. CLT Wright Small Northern Hunter. Next up, we got another one from LT. No box with this knife. Comes in a nice fold over sheath. Really, really encases this knife. Here it is. The LT Wright Frontier Valley in A2 steel. We've got a drop point blade, 2 and 15 16 inches in length. A matte finished red linen micarta handle, brass pins. The handle length on the Frontier Valley is 3 and 5 eighths. It's just what you need. Just a nice little, uh, a nice little entry level or, uh, you know, gateway drug to LT right knives. A little bit of rubbing near the spine. I think that might be from the sheath or maybe from when they applied that sharp 90 degree spine just a little bit of polish over or buff over but other than that we're going to say near mint no box and it's probably really like new uh anyway these were 75 bucks new web price this one can be yours no tax no postage all in 60 bucks like it is 80 with an apostle p edge the lt right frontier valley Next up, those were kind of your uh, less expensive LT rights, and now we have sort of the LT right knife to have. There's the box. Inside the box, oh, there's no label on the end. Don't rip it. Okay, wearing some Kydex with a fire steel loop. And then a hybrid leather and Kydex dangle. That's some beautiful work right there. And we've also got a nice little paracord lanyard with a wooden bead. And inside, I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sorry, Lon. But this is the best modern Kephart going right now, in my opinion. It's the Genesis. And this particular Genesis is full height convex ground with a convex edge. And the blade steel is CPM 3V. It's very Kephart, right? Blade length's four and an eighth, handles four and five eighths. Material, uh, LT's calling it double red micarta. So it is like super dark red and beautifully matte finished. I don't know what he's using to finish this, but man, that is luxurious looking, just beautiful. It's not polished, but it's very nice. Thick white liners. Beautiful thumb dents. And notice how the thumb dent is machined after assembly because the pin is in the dent. That's just cool. Man, is that nice. 
condition is like new in the box. Uh, I don't know what these were new. I did know. Why didn't I write it? I think they were like 260 guys. And they're out of stock everywhere. And they are hot. Uh, 240 shipped priority mail. And then 260 with my edge on it. And I would do a convex on this just because it needs to be. Unless you want V-ground. The LT Wright Genesis Convex 3V. Okay, it is time for the Rob's Pick knife of tonight's knife sale. And I told you in my heads up video, this is a special one. And I'm doing something kind of special. It's the Rob's Pick because... I didn't want the early birds to have all day to think about it. I wanted everybody at 9 o'clock to see this knife, and you will. Hmm, notice the old label. Uh-huh. The Classic Series Rogue with Antique Ivory Micarta. Oh. This is why I love Mike Stewart. This knife is why I love Mike Stewart. It is a faithful, a faithful mid-19th century Bowie knife. Uh, unlike the movie-style authentic Bowies, this is probably like the Bowie uh, Jim carried when he fought, right? Beautiful leather sheath. And this is a belt dog sheath. It goes cross draw through the belt. Stops on that dog and then the blade draws, right? Oh, my. So it's not a clip point, but the swedge makes it look that way. And notice the etch, guys. That says prototype. Blade steals A2, I believe. Blade length on the Rogue. Seven inches. Handle length is five and a sixteenth. Look at that antique ivory. Look at all those pins and look at that coffin profile. Oh my. And you've got a three piece bolster, aluminum with brass in the middle. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So let's see. I'm going to say it's near mint in box and it's probably never been carried, guys. It's just old. Um, let's see. Unobtainium. You can't buy one new. You can't buy one on eBay. And you saw the price on the box. You can't buy it for that either. Your price on this one is $250 like it is, $280 with my edge on it. And if it's still here at $915, I'm going to pay my seller and keep it. That is the Bark River Rogue Bowie Prototype. Next up, the last Barky in the sale. Mm -hmm. It's another classic, a Fox River and CPM 154. Man, this is a year-round woods explorer beauty right here in the weatherproof, waterproof treated leather sheath. Oh, we've got... I have waterproof treatment on my blade. There's your CPM 154 blade. Just a beautiful, graceful drop point. And it is four and a sixteenth in length. The handle is beautifully matte finished. Canvas micarta. Pure Stewart. The handle length is four and a quarter. And then you've got full tank construction with the lanyard slot. And the lanyard hole, whichever you prefer. Other than my waterproof goo, which is probably keeping the blade pretty. It's like uh, new in box. Uh, these are out of stock currently in CPM 154. This would have been 220 web retail when it was new. It is still like new. We're going to sell it for 150 bucks. Shipped priority mail. 170 with an Apostle Piedge. That's the Bark River Fox River. Oh, guys. <clears throat> Next up. 
Uh, I know there's like several of you who are trying to buy one of these right now. From Chris Reeve Knives, we've got an Umnumzan in S45VN. Oh, birth card says September 29th of last year, the last run, right? They're gone. You can't buy one. This one is like new in the box. Nary a trail honor. Oh. Action's nice. Blade is beautiful. There's your engagement right where you want it. Silky. Blade centering's dead. It's a beautiful example. Um, let's see. This is going to be more expensive than the last one we sold. Uh, it's in better shape. And prices just keep going up. Let me tell you guys uh, what Omnum Zons are bringing in actual transactions on eBay. Sold listings. Uh, Pre-owned knives in like new condition. Between six fifty and twelve seventy five. This one six ten, like it is six thirty five, with an apostle P edge. That is the Chris Reeve Um Num Zan. Next up, from Vero Engineering, this is a Joseph Vero Isotope inlaid version. Wow, what a handsome knife. <clears throat> yeah, I, these are so deceiving because you look at a knife with this styling, especially on the show side, and you think it must be like an Amnundi or maybe the size of a small Sabenza. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. It's nowhere near that. Uh, this is the Isotope Integral inlaid version. And I don't know what kind of wood that is, but man, is it pretty. I do not know. It almost could be a linen micarta. I, it might be. Anyway, a very tiny front flipper. Very firm detent. Beautiful action. Stunning clip point blade with the pocket to nowhere. Only on the off side. Strange. Gorgeous blade. The steel on this one is M390, three and seven eighths inches of blade, and then uh, four and seven eighths inches of handle. You get a steel inserted lock interface. Cool how that flipper tab disappears right there. Isn't that neat? Flipping action is great. Centering is perfect. Condition is very near mint to like new. In pouch. These are super rare and super desirable, and you can't buy a new one. Your price for this one, $560, $560, like it is, $585 with an Apostle Piage. The Joseph Vero Isotope. Next up, okay, this is probably going to be the, it's definitely the first time. It'll probably be the last and only time I sell a knife like this. But I know one of you guys is going to want it. So that box looks not like a Grimsmo box. And it's very hard to open because it like gets gets seal locked. It's like better than a pelican. Got a poly bag. I got a wrench. I got a card. Hilberg knives. It's the Hilberg Norseman. So this is an S35 blade. No, it's not. It's an M390 blade. <clears throat> We've got a milled titanium handle. With kind of a bronzy, goldy, purpley anno. <clears throat> TC4 titanium, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ceramic ball bearings. Yeah, it looks like a Norseman. I'm sure it's made in China. Pretty attractive. Got a bit of a soft detent, but it flips great. Does it droppy shetty? Let's see. Yep. 
centered up. Let's take a look. It's got your step milling. Got a nice stone wash. It does have sharp edges. Pretty good rip off, I got to say. Condition we'll call very near mint in box. Very near mint in box. What do I know about this? I know that they sold for about two fifty. We're gonna do this one at one ninety, like it is two twenty five, for me to sharpen it. Okay. Next up, we've got one from Italy by way of Sulphur, Oklahoma. It's the Lion Steel Collector Knives Warhorse. So it's like a roundhead Barlow. Almost polished natural canvas. Very nice. Titanium bolsters. We call these fusion knives, right? Slip joint classic patterns with modern materials and construction. We have a main clip in M390. Double long pull cut swedge. And we got a main worn cliff. Same configuration, also an M390. So three and three quarters inches of closed length, two on 390 blades. Pull is about a seven. Walk and talk is perfect. And the blade centering is pretty doggone nice too. Condition on this one is like new. No box. This knife is in stock at Collector Knives for 163 plus tax. This one can be yours all in, shipped, priority mail, 135 like it is, 165. I sharpen both blades. The Lion Steel War Horse. Next up, got another fusion knife. This from Viper, Maniago, Italy. Beautiful little distressed leather pocket slip. And a very handsome knife. This just screams Italian knife. <clears throat> Fusion knife, right? Modern materials and construction, slip joint mechanism. Look at that file worked back spring. Carbon fiber that's smooth in the front and then milled at the tail. Uh, very neat. Uh -huh. So M390 blade, four and a sixteenth closed. The blade is three and three sixteenths on a nail neck. And it's got about an eight pull, guys. S good snap. You wipe this blade off because they finish it so nice. You just got to see it. This is the Viper Key. Mm -hmm. If I didn't tell you, the blade's M390. And it's designed by Jesper Voxness. How about that? Just gorgeous. And the blade centering is dead. Condition. Like new no box, but with the slip. Oh, these are available brand new at your favorite web retailer for $160 plus tax. Or just buy this one all in. Shipping, tax, everything. Like it is 155 with an Apostle Piage. That's the Viper Key. Next up, kind of our second Franken knife of the sale. This one from Spider Co. It's a paramilitary too, K390, but it's had a scale swap because I'm pretty sure. I, I think, let me see here. Yeah, I can always tell because there's usually tool marks on the lanyard tube. So it's definitely been a part. <clears throat> I think these came in natural canvas um, with the K390 blade. This is wearing OD Green G10, which, frankly, on a pair of two, you got to have G10 uh, or carbon fiber because it. I think canvas micarta is just too springy. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of like the swap actually, and I want you to look at this blade, guys. How he got K390 to turn that beautifully uniform gray, I don't know, but man, that looks nice. A lot of these will orange rust. 
<clears throat> that's beautiful. It's been sharpened. And it's still pretty sharp. Mechanically, rock solid lockup, free dropping action, and perfect centering. So bravo on whoever did the scale swap. Very, very nice. I have no idea what it's worth. Uh, I figure it's got to be worth 180 So that's what we're going to sell it for. 180 like it is. 205 with an apostrophe edge. Spyderco Para 2 ODK 390. Next up. This is a save me from myself knife right here, boys. <clears throat> it's a Spyderco and it's a Police 4. And if you want, if you looked on my Spyderco shelf in the gun room, you would see that I got a thing for pack of wood and hap 40. <laughs> More for the hap 40 than the pack of wood, but anyway, knife center exclusive, Police Four, and I, doggone it, I've been seeing a lot of handsome pack of wood lately, and look at that, that's handsome, both sides handsome. Polished clip, and guys, the clip's got a nice scratch in it. Looks like he uh, broke a hip. On concrete, anyway. Let's see the blade. Hap 40, clad in what is that? SUS 410, yeah. And you know, the, if you cut anything, the cladding will get some hairlines in it, and it's got some. This knife's been used and sharpened. Uh, it's a pretty sharp, although not super attractive edge. Rock solid lockup. Actually, not super free, but it's a huge knife. Centering is kind of down the middle. Blade length on the Police 4 is a robust 4 and 3 eighths inches. The handle 5 and a half. Man, if you can't fit your hand on that thing, you got issues. So, condition issues noted, right? Um, these are 224 at Knife Center on their dealer exclusive. This one can be yours, 180 like it is, 205 with an apostle P edge. That's the Spyderco Police 4 pack of hap 40. Next up, it's a Spyderco Golden Colorado. It's a pair of 3 FRN in Spy 27. Uh -huh. cool. So you've got, dare I say, a purple FRN handle. A deep carry, paper clip clip, reversible left or right, compression lock, Golden Colorado USA Earth, CPM Spy 27. It's been used, it's been sharpened, and same owner as the last knife. The edge is sharp, but not super refined. Okay, now the action is not great it's not horrible lockup is solid and the centering is off to the right a bit uh, so condition on this we're going to say is near mint in box but interesting areas noted <clears throat> uh, map price on this brand new at your favorite web retailer is 154 this one can be yours with a pretty cool super super steel. 145 if you like my edge on it. 120 like it is. 145 sharpen. Spider Co. Pair 3 FRN Blue Spy 27. That brings us to the last knife in the sale. It's from Squid. <clears throat> Squid makes Balasong trainers and they're kind of nice. You know, they swing. They. I will not flip stuff because I can't flip worth a poop and I don't have enough camera room to do it. But this is called the Squid Mako. Gee, why would they call it the Mako? And I, I've heard tell you can open bottles with that. <clears throat> There's your Squid Industries Maker's Mark. There is your very minimal side play on the handles. Nice and free. So you got a blade at four and an eighth. Handle is five and seven sixteenths. No latch. They're just for training, training, training. They don't, no reason for them to lock shut. A little paracord lanyard tied. Not sure why you'd want that. 
condition is going to be near mint to like new no box. These are a hundred bucks new. They're out of the green right now. And by the way, that is a uh, hard anodized aluminum. Uh, so out of stock at a hundred. Let's do this one at uh, 75 shipped priority mail. That's the squid Mako Balasong trainer. And that my friends brings us to the end of the Cinco de Mayo knife sale. Hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the word is sharp. Have at her, boys.